everybody, welcome back. It's another Whiskey Quickie, and it is the grand finale of hunting season, or maybe it's just kind of getting started, because I still think there might be bottles trickling yeah. out, or just getting started, or finding out about it. But I think it's the grand finale of the reviews, because I feel like we're the last ones to review this one this year. I know, we got too much crap going on. <laughs> Sorry, BT, but it's good, because you get all the initial reviews, and then you have us trickle behind to just give you a rebump. Not that you need the re <laughs> not that you need a bump in sales, but well, it, no, it is the review you've been waiting for it's, because of yeah, course, this is the most important. It's life changing reviews. <laughs> so this is the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection 2023, and we're going to be staying in category and then moving up. And so the first one we're starting off with is Sazerac 18 year old, and so this collection of rye whiskeys was filled in between the fall of 2004 and spring of 2005, aged in warehouses K, L, and M. And it's at 90 proof. And by the way, this is all $100 for each one of these that come out. So an absolute steal if you can find any yeah, of them. Assuming at, you can find them. Hopefully you win a lottery. It's like a big chain and you get to pay uh, SRP. But most likely that's not, that's a pipe dream. No, I think that's another thing we'll, we'll probably bring up on a, on a future roundtable is winning a lottery called hunting. Well, well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. Yeah, we'll save that for another one. But let's go ahead and dive in. So, Sazerac, eighteen year, on with the nose. Some nice oakiness to it. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's it's got, it just has a. It's not an overly like rye profile when you get no, into it. No, definitely not. It's definitely. And we'll probably repeat ourselves with all the Buffalo Trace, but I get this predominant cherry note. Mm hmm. Maybe Michigan cherries. Maybe. But I don't know. And there's also like a dusty kind of oh, yeah. that I always get with this. But the past few years of Sazerac 18 year have really been good. Yeah. There was two dud years that were in there, but the past few have been really good. All right. On with the nose. I mean taste. On the taste. Thank <laughs> you. It's very light and approachable, but there's a ton of flavor with that. So it's got that bright cherry notes. Um, kind of like a herbal tea kind of thing going too. Um, some nice oak presence. It's not overly oaky or um, tannic or anything. It's really well balanced. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. I, I think the only thing, that, of course, that holds it back is being 90 proof. Sure, it's just it's very light, very delicate, but there's still man, a ton of flavor. There's still a proof. ton of flavor, and it's it's. I I don't think I find a whole lot of 90 proofers that I'd be like, oh, this is this is. It doesn't special. taste like a rye. Um, it could fool me for a high rye bourbon that that's that, that old. Um, Very true. There's no mintiness or dillness. There's none of that. It's it's just um, fruity and just oaky. There's a lot of good things going on. There you go. Yep. Fruity and oaky. Fruity and like oaky. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right. So on the nose, how are you going to rate it? Thumbs up. Really liked it. I agree. And the taste? Thumbs up. Really liked it. And the finish? <sighs> Sideways. I mean... That proof does hold it back. Um, it kind of falls flat at the end, but there's still a ton of flavor on that front and mid palate. So, uh, but finish just went a little more. Uh. I get it. It's it's hard to do that at ninety proof, but man, there's a lot of flavor. I say if you yeah. can find it, great at a hundred dollars. If you're spending a thousand dollars, it's that's a toss up. Yeah, that's a toss up with everything. <laughs> <laughs> True, thousand bucks. I don't know what kind of bankroll you're playing with. Uh, not not one that I would probably tell my wife about. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Love you, hun. All right, stick around. We're back with the Thomas H. Handy. All right, it's time to move on to the Thomas H. Handy. It is the rye. It is the barrel-proof rye of it, and this is comprised of barrels that are aged over six years. Initially launched in response to consumer requests for more well-aged and barrel-strength whiskey, this uncut, unfiltered straight rye whiskey clocks in at 124.9 proof. All right, here we go. On with the nose. Okay. The alcohol really starts after coming off the last one. The alcohol yeah. really hits you. So the predominant note for me on the nose, I mean, you get a little hint of vanilla cream on there, but it really explodes in that like just cinnamon candy kind of note. Kind of big red too. I yeah. Not the gum. The soda. The soda. The soda. Yeah. Not, Why do I just call it soda? Not the coke. The pop. <laughs> the pop. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, I haven't had a big red in a long time. Yeah. But big red chewing gum is definitely that very cinnamon forward type yeah. of flavor too. Whereas big red drinks like kind of, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> it probably kills you, <laughs> especially when you drink a white castle. It's, uh, <laughs> it's 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 got a lot of sugar. We'll put it that way. Yeah. All right. On with the taste. Well, same with the nose. It starts off with that. 
It builds up kind of creaminess, but then it explodes in that like cinnamon candy. A slight hint of maybe like strawberry or cherry, but mostly that cinnamon note is like very pronounced. Yes, it is. If you were to make a a pie and just just sprinkle cinnamon, it's just a cinnamon. Just dump cinnamon. On I mean, it. Have you ever done a cinnamon challenge before? I have not. <laughs> have you seen it before? No. Or you have to take a spoonful of cinnamon and eat it. No. Oh, it's that's like the it's impossible. The blazing wing challenge. Well, B dubs. I'm, I'm sure that's exactly the tasting <laughs> notes they wanted. That's what you've been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, let's go ahead and give our review. So on the nose, how are you gonna rate this one? Mm, sideways. Okay. Yeah. The taste. Mm, sideways. I mean, there's some okay things, but it's very cinnamon forward. Um, yeah, it's kind of one dimensional for me. And the finish. Uh, sideways. It's kind of cinnamon and kind of hot for for what it is. So, uh, but I mean, if you get a hundred bucks, it's probably a good value. I wouldn't probably do anything over that. Yeah. Whereas the first one, I could see me paying the size eighteen. I could pay you know three four hundred bucks for. Would you? Ooh, okay. I mean, assuming I, assuming I had money, this is <laughs> hypothetical money that. Oh, I all right. Oh, well, you know, you you pawn some of your kids' toys from Christmas. That's and right. All of a sudden, you got an extra few bucks. In Sorry, here. kids. No Legos this year. <laughs> no Legos. Size eighteen. <laughs> no VR sets. No PS. Whatever they are up to now. Yeah. But anyways, uh, yeah, this one's it's good, but it's not it's not amazing. Yeah. All right. Well, that is a review of Thomas H. Handy. We'll be back with moving on to the bourbons. Well, moving on with the bourbons, this is going to be starting at the lower proof. But when I say lower, it's 101 proof, and it's not even Eagle Rare 17 year. It's not even your Eagle Rare 18 year. It's Eagle Rare 19 year. It's not, even Eagle, it's not even Eagle Rare 19 year. It's Eagle Rare 19 year and three months old. Oh, wow. That three months really did something. It, But I'll tell you what, it is it is marketing at the end of the day and people need to know about it. 19.3. Yes. And so this is the oldest release of the Spirit since its 23 year inclusion in the antique collection. I guess until the recently announced 25 year old. Oh, yes. That was also released, but. That comes with a ten thousand dollar price tag, yeah. and we did not get a sample of that. <laughs> they are they are not so uh, generous with their samples for that one, but that's okay. I think if maybe you find this one, we'll see what it, we'll see what it is, but it will probably be a good consolation prize. Yep. So this whiskey was distilled in the spring of two thousand four. Barrels were aged in warehouses C, I, K, M, and Q. And Eagle Rare Seventeen is once again bottled one hundred and one proof in tribute to the original Eagle Rare brand, launched in nineteen seventy five. I've really been a big fan of these since they moved the proof up to 101. It used to be 90-ish. 90-ish, yeah. Yeah, and so ever since they've done that, these have been fantastic. So let's see if the 2023 builds on the success they've had the past few years. Let's keep that train rolling. That's right. On with the nose. Oh, yeah. It's a bourbon candle. It is a bourbon candle. It is, I mean, it is just that sweet oak. It's that, yeah. that cherry. I mean, it's just... I mean, if you lit a bourbon candle from Bath and Body Works, probably smells just like it. It would not be far off. Yeah, I agree. That sweet oak, caramel, vanilla, cherry. I mean, everything on the wheel you could pick out. On Bath the and Body Works has to have a release of bourbon scent, right? Oh, I guarantee it. They have to. If not, I they do have know. an antique collection. Of, <laughs> they have of, an antique collection of, it. of soaps and candles. <laughs> but I do know Chad and Sarah over at. Uh, it's bourbon night. They have their whiskey ambitions and they make candles and they have bur- different bourbon oh, scents. So, well, there you go. They need to take this and make it into a bourbon scent. I agree. All right. Uh, let's go ahead. On with the taste. Oh, yeah. There's like chocolate, strawberry, cherry, vanilla. I mean, oak, leather. I mean, there's like, you could check everything. I mean, it's, this is really good. It's all, it's just perfectly rounded. The proof is right on there. It doesn't, it's, I'd say it doesn't burn. I'm sure so, somebody would say it burned. For me, it's just like. It's the, perfectly balanced. Right there. Yeah. I mean, it is just exactly where it needs to be. Yeah, it's got a ton of flavor. The finish isn't going to be like this big spicy thing, but it's just, there's so many, like it's just sitting on my palate right now and I, I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. <laughs> it's kind of like just. Using like putting the tongue on the top of your mouth and kind yeah. of pushing it up to move it around your cheeks just to kind of get the last little morsel out of it. Yeah, this one's good. Yeah, I'd say if you were to call this one a Neapolitan ice cream. Oh, that's brilliant. Chocolate, yeah, vanilla, strawberry, strawberry, all all in there. Is all Neapolitan vanilla or is it pistachio? It's vanilla. Is it okay? It has to be. I yeah, because I thought it was like Italian, so maybe there was a pistachio. 
but maybe not. I'm 99% sure it's vanilla. I have, I have not bought Neapolitan ice cream from Kroger in a very, very long, in a long time, time, but I'm pretty sure that's the way it is. Yeah, if I do buy ice cream, it's like the black raspberry chocolate from uh, Graders. That's it. Is that what you get? Yeah. That's what my kid gets. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> You're just a kid at heart then. Pretty much. It's, it's the chocolate chunks that probably get you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that nice raspberry. Fitness. All right. On with the review here. So on the nose. Uh, two thumbs up. And on the taste. Thumbs up. And the finish. Thumbs up. This one's really good. Like after tasting the first two, this one's like a layer above those. I totally agree. Well, let's see if we can keep that train rolling because William LaRue Weller is up next. Now we're moving up. It is Weller mania time because everybody loves everything Weller. The beanie babies of bourbon. It, it you, truly you is. You get every color. You don't know what they are, but you still get them. Green, red, <laughs> blue, black. Got to get them all. Well, White. Wait, there's pumpkin spice. There's, oh, and I'm just kidding. But I, actually there is the orange label. Yeah, there's like the orange, the, the white, white label. the black, the green, the blue, black, and... I think you said black twice, but... Did I? Okay. <laughs> and then there's Daniel Weller, which throws even more confusion. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. But this is the Mac Daddy. This is the big one. This is yeah. the uncut, unfiltered, weeded bourbon recipe coming from Buffalo Trace. And this year's offering was distilled in the spring of 2011, which makes it also 12 years old. And his barrels were aged in warehouses C, L, M, and N... It's 133.6 proof. The Clemen combination. The Clemen. I don't know. Oh, did you? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you try to put those letters together. Yeah, you just, you just got to get rid of all the vowels. Yep. But this is also going to be much higher than last year's proof, which is only 124.7. So looking forward to diving into this one. So what is, I can't remember, what was the Dem, the Daniel Weller story? It was. I know it's like a 12-year-old something. I believe, I don't know if it was, tw- was it 12 years? I, I can't so. remember. I thought it was one that was distilled at bourbon pompeii or distilled somewhere differently i don't think they're I, I don't still think, in bourbon pompeii well the the maybe you know, where they uncovered there? it because they they put up you know they put the the copper uh fermentation, fermentation tank, tank so maybe it fermented there it got some river soot in it <laughs> yeah that's what makes it something <laughs> just just a little little dust of some bacteria you know, yeah it, it doesn't hurt yeah love me some Black mud from the river bottom. Right where it floods. That's right. Because right. that's usually where it, you get a good rain, that river will overflow into that, that area. All right. Enough of us jibber jabbered. On with the nose here of William Weller. Hmm. Okay. I like it. Yeah. It's got that nice creaminess on the front nose, but, uh, then that cherry note is just like, bam. It's you know, pronounced. It's very pronounced. It's and right then there. a slight hint of sweet oak on the the nose. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. There's, uh, of course, the alcohol is there, but what do you expect when you're getting barrel proof whiskey? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. On with the taste. Well, just like the nose, it starts off creamy, then builds up with this nice bright cherry, and then kind of moves into like some cinnamon, but then those oak flavors really sit there on the finish. I love hearing you talk because as soon as you say it, I'm going like, oh, yep, there it is. There it is. There it is. Yep. No, it, it truly is. And I I, I love just the, the complexity that's built into this. There is that that cherry note that's very common in the BT profile, but you amplify it. Of course, the weeded, the weller at all, just, you're just like, is it the Midas touch? Can it go wrong? Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of Weller 107 and Weller 12. The other ones, I'm like, eh. Yeah, but but uh, this, one's, this one's really good. It's really good. Yeah. Really. All right. So on with the rating on the nose, how are you going to say? Thumbs up. Really liked it. And the taste. Thumbs up. Really like it. The finish. Thumbs up. Really like it. I mean, this one's this one's really solid. I, I still maybe like the Eagle Rare slightly more, but this one's close second. You know, they're, they're really good. Both of them are really good. We'll give our thoughts at the end. Stay tuned. One more. George She's Tag coming up. All right, we're rounding it out with the last one of the antique collection. It is the highest proof of it this year, and it is George T. Stag, which has always been my yeah. Favorite, that's so your I'm, that's your wheelhouse. I'm kind of I'm and they didn't skip a year this year. They, they didn't. They finally consecutive years. They they didn't disappoint me. That's right. Thank you, Buffalo Trace. Yep. But this year's is 135 proof, and this was distilled in the spring of 2008. And its barrels were aged in warehouses C I K L M. M, 
Cyclamen? Cyclamen. 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 I don't know. So this is going to be 14, or sorry, 15 years and four months old. Oh, that's probably right in your wheelhouse. Oh, it's going to be tough to beat. All right, here we go. On with the nose. Okay. It's got a, it's, it's so much different than what we had with Eagle Rare and the Weller. Like it's a very, it's like a, like a, I don't want to say burnt, but it's, 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 it's like, like a, a, it's a darker, like, yeah, it's like a potpourri basket, like, um, bourbon potpourri, but there's definitely like a darker element to it, you know, like more nose of like figs, perns, dates, you know, kind of like those flavor profiles instead of these like light, bright, kind of more fruity notes. This one's definitely more richer, decadent. I'm so glad I had you. Cause I was just like, it felt like there was just like somebody cast a spell and there was a shadow and a cloud that came over <laughs> everything because that's what it felt like in regards of what we just came from to what, what we're going to. Linus, you know, from, uh, gosh, Snoopy, Linus has a cloud <laughs> over it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's, it's just the only one with a cloud over it. Yeah. Maybe that's why it's able to sit there. Yeah. For just a ton years. of dark fruits. Yes. All right. Well, let's go ahead on with the taste. Oh man. This one's definitely the most oak pronounced. Holy crap, I'm going to say it. It's over oaked. Yeah. It's very oaky. Very, um, but not. I have to go back for a second taste. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's definitely like those rich, sugary, dark fruits that come out the front. Um, but then it is like very tannic, very bitter, you know, for the finish. Um, this is a oak balm to me. All right. So second taste was a lot better than the first. The first one, I was like, wait, did I just get this weird, like mold, mildy fungus kind of thing? Oh, it? I didn't but get that. I didn't get that. Second time, I did get what you were saying. There is a ton of oak there. You know, I love my sweet oak, but it might be just a little bit above hitting that yellow to the red. <laughs> if you had a meter, that's where it would be for me. Yeah, it's... um. Personally, it, it's a a little bitter, a little tannic for me, but uh, like there's some great sweetness on the front with those dark fruits, but uh, the oak is definitely the pronounced predominant flavor moving forward. The only reason I would still love to have this is because to complete a George T. Stagg lineup to be able to try them from years sure. and years and other things, you could try this one compared to other ones and see how it is. I still think it's it's still good at the end of the day. Don't no, get me no, wrong. it is. It's still great. I'm curious. Maybe I'll do like just a hint. If you were like, you're gonna do water in yours? Just to see what oh, it does. Oh, no. Just hey, see what it does. The chef said you can prepare it how you want, but I'm gonna add ketchup to my I'm steak. I'm blend it to 108. No, yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, but, you know, for me, this was, uh, it's still, it's still good, but it is not comparing to the years past that I've had. Oh, if you prove it down a little bit, opens it up really nice. Well, if I get a full bottle of it, I may, I may test it at that point then. Yeah. But it's still, like I said, still good. But let's go ahead and let's rate it on with the nose. Where you at? Thumbs up. I really liked it. Even though it's oaky, but there's a ton of good, like, aromas going on. And the taste? You know, front and mid palate, love it. And the finish? That's where you Uh, go side? Sideways. It's just a little tannicky, bitter, dry, like I'm searching for water. I feel like I'm in the desert, you know. But uh, like you talked about the cinnamon challenge earlier. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, it's just a little oaky for me, but. When I just put like just a hint of water, it really opened it up and it just is opened it up to this nice bouquet of fruitiness and sweetness. Yeah, I agree. There is a, an overpronounced oak to it, but that's, it doesn't matter. We're just two idiot it, podcasters. That, but you, but you wait, that's what you've been waiting for, right? That's right. People have been waiting for this review. So we're just letting you know what we feel and everything like that on this. All day. right. So what's your favorite? So if I had to choose my favorite of the five, I, I think. The easiest one to kind of go with to say, if I was to look at flavor, proof, price, and a relative what else is out there, Eagle Rare. Yeah. All day. Hands down, Eagle Rare was, to me, like, uh, way better than all of them. <laughs> I, I think that it was, like, the best by far. Yep. I'd say Eagle I mean, Rare. Weller would be second. Exactly. But I think there's a big gap between Eagle Rare and the Weller, and then... Probably stag and then the eighteen and then handy. I think handy's in the, the far back in the in the pack here. But handy had been good the past couple of years. Like I thought I was pretty. I I have to look back, but 
I remember them being pretty good. Yeah, it almost had like a candied apple yeah. taste to it, but this year didn't really have that too much. But anyway, I, this is going to be our review of the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection 2023. They were all fantastic. Yep. Thank you to BT for yes. sending us all these. We really appreciate it. Because we'll probably never get to try these out in the wild. So to be able to do a review, we're very grateful and thank you for that. Absolutely. All right. Well, that's going to be it for the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection 2023. Cheers, everybody. We'll see you next time.